I will briefly introduce myself for the people who don't know me. And I also want to introduce some of my colleagues uh, um, in the um, International Organizing Committee of the African School of Physics. So um, I am Ketevi Asamagan. Um, I am a physicist at Brookhaven National Laboratory. I do experimental particle physics. And I also do uh, uh, physics education and outreach. I am a member of the International Organizing Committee of the African School of Physics. Um, some of my colleagues are connected here. Uh, Steve, would you introduce yourself? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. So uh, my name is Steve Mwanza. I'm a physicist uh, also in experimental high energy physics. I'm based in Marseille and I work for uh, CNRS IN2P3. I work uh, with Ketevi on the ATLAS um, uh, collaboration. I'm a member of the uh, International Organizing Committee of the African School of Physics. Um, and yeah, that's, a, that's about it. Um, is uh, Christine connected? Okay, not yet. Um, all right, so today we have the pleasure to, um, to have uh, members of uh, the International Association of Physics students to talk to us about uh, this wonderful organization. Our objective is to see how African students uh, can engage in this, uh, uh, in this organization and, and how they can uh, also enrich um, their, their involvement in the International Association of uh, Physics Students. Um, so uh, what, what, what we would do is that uh, um, we will have Duarte who is uh, the current president of the, of the association uh, to introduce himself and, uh, and his team uh, before we get going. So Duarte, uh, I will now give you the floor. Okay, thank you very much, Katevi. I hope everyone is hearing me well enough. Uh, so, um, as Ketevi mentioned, uh, I will be presenting um, some, some important information about what IAPS is, a bit about its history, um, and also um, a, a bit of an outlook uh, into what we, we can expect and what we want it to go in the, the future. And uh, to also add to the presentation, I have several uh, colleagues from the executive committee here today. Um, there's uh, Elora McFall, who is currently the advocacy and outreach manager of IAPS. There's Owen Higgins, who is currently the treasurer. Um, Ruhi Shitra, who is currently the uh, secretary uh, of the executive committee. Um, and also Sofia Ferreira Teixeira, who is a um, coordinator of the, um, the organizing committee of one of our main events, uh, which is Planks, a, a competition that uh, Sophia will also um, talk a bit more about later on in the, the presentation. Um, so I believe I can uh, start off by um, then launching this presentation. And to start, um, I can just talk a bit about the general aims of the International Association of Physics Students. So basically, it is supposed to serve the purpose of being the international link for physics students and young physicists around the globe. So sort of the umbrella organization for all students um, from all levels, um, whether it's uh, bachelor's, master's, PhD, um, or beyond. Uh, that are studying in any area related to physics. And basically the four main aims of IAPS as it is stated in the IAPS charter are to support young physicists, to build international bridges, encourage peaceful international collaborations and promote professional 
and social networking, as you see in the screen there. So basically, this is what um, serves as the main roots of our organization from which everything else uh, essentially unfolds. But of course, it's important to also know a few more details. So basically, IAPS was founded on the 12th of September in 1987 in Budapest. It was basically a, um, a couple of handfuls of students that essentially decided to create this organization very much motivated uh, from the, the, um, uh, the socio-political uh, circumstances that made them think it would be important to create uh, an organization that could basically um, present physics students with a platform that would go beyond borders and would um, essentially unify physics students around this ideal of a, a um, science uh, academia without borders and without uh, geopolitical interests interfering with that, um, that dynamic. Um, and essentially this was a year after the first international conference of physics students was organized. Um, I will mention a few more details about this later. Um, so essentially this was the sort of uh, launching motivation for uh, the International Association of Physics Students. And of course it is characterized as a non-profit, non-governmental association. We uh, have been headquartered in Mulhouse, France, uh, coinciding with the headquarters of the European Physical Society. Basically, EPS has been um, the, the main organization with which we've had a collaboration for a very long time now. They uh, help us a lot with uh, administrative tasks, with financial matters, um, and also, of course, with this matter of having our headquarters there it really helps us in terms of being able to uh, manage paperwork, legal matters and everything. Um, and of course, IAPS is governed by an executive committee um, and also with subcommittees and working groups that the executive committee uh, forms every year to basically assist with all of the uh, important management tasks that the, exec uh, the executive committee is supposed to handle. So essentially, this is the, the structure of IAPS. Um, the IAPS general meeting is basically the, um, the main decision-making body that gathers all of the IAPS members to make fundamental decisions about IAPS, most, um, what, one of the most important of which is electing the executive committee that is responsible for managing IAPS on a daily basis. So this is a nine person group uh, currently that is elected uh, every year at the IAPS annual general meeting. And the current uh, distribution of tasks uh, is, as you can see there on the screen, there's the president, secretary and treasurer. These are in fact um, tasks that are basically required by law to, for us to have. Uh, but then there's um, the other six positions that the, the IAPS members fix every year. They basically decide how to distribute the workload, and this is the current distribution. So we have someone responsible for events, IT, PR, recruitment, advocacy and outreach, and members and alumni. At present, in terms of membership, we basically have uh, the numbers on screen are actually um, a bit um, outdated. We currently have uh, 22 national committees and we've just welcomed a 23rd local committee into the organization. Um, and currently we have um, a few dozen um, individual members, but these are a, a bit hard to keep track because a lot of the individual members that we have uh, mostly join to attend a certain event. But of course, we always have the goal of um, trying to get individual members to form local student groups bec because that's one of the main aims of IAPS. Of course, it's building um, organizations, helping students organize locally 
so they can essentially um, do a lot of important activities, provide opportunities for uh, their fellow students. So currently our estimate, um, our best estimates are that we probably have between 60 and 70,000 students um, directly or indirectly uh, associated to IAPS from almost 50 countries. So this is of course still a fraction of the world as you can basically see in this map, um, still after about 30 plus years of the organization, we're still very much concentrated in Europe. But this is something that we have come to, to realize more and more that we really need to change. Um, and that is in fact one of the reasons why we are here today, because we want uh, to really recruit people in the areas that uh, we've been missing members for many years now. And it is truly important for the current executive committee and I believe for all of IAPS members to make sure that IAPS truly reaches the aim of becoming uh, international. And of course, for that, uh, we need to do a lot of efforts like the one that we are doing here today to do um, outreach, to reach out to students, and make sure that we spread uh, the word and information about IAPS. And of course, um, as we're, we're gonna have here today, give opportunities to students to ask all the questions um, they, they feel they want to ask. Um, and of course, try to convince as many students as possible to actively participate in IAPS. So essentially this um, sort of shows the, the logos of the, the current members of IAPS. There's a few uh, missing there, but of course we currently have um, over 40 uh, either national or local student organizations connected to, to IAPS, um, and we hope that um, we get several more uh, this year, even though of course the situation of the pandemic makes things a, a bit um, stranger than usual. Um, even with all of that, um, I do believe that we are um, having a lot of progress and hopefully we can get many more members from several other countries um, still this year. So essentially, um, of course, IAPS is also made up of the activities that it is able to promote um, that also represent opportunities for all of the students that are part of it to either get to know um, some institution connected to physics better, like with IAPS to CERN. It is uh, an annual visit uh, of about 40 to 50 students uh, from, from usually from 10 to 20 countries uh, that, of course, visit uh, as many spaces of CERN as, um, as possible and get to know a bit more of what happens there and observe a bit of uh, the activity uh, that um, that physicists and engineers do in in CERN to really make the uh, particle physics magic happen. Um, and of course, we have several um, major flagship events, most notably the International Conference of Physics Students. Uh, I'll talk a bit um, a bit more uh, about it in in just a few moments. Uh, we have the Planck's competition. Uh, both of these are also organized on a, a yearly basis. Uh, as I mentioned, Sophia will talk uh, more about the Planck's competition of this year. Um, and then we also have truly, truly important outreach efforts that we uh, engage in every year. In the case of the International Day of Light, for example, we've had a collaboration with the, the various organizations that are a part of, of the, the um, organizing of the International Day of Light. And we always try to promote um, the, the organization of activities on the occasion of, of IDL uh, to our members. And some of them uh, do engage in, in very interesting activities every year. And we have our own, um, let's say, flagship outreach event that we do every year, which is the IAP School Day. The essential purpose is for um, our members at the local level to go to um, preferably high schools, um, but also, of course, to, to younger students 
um, audiences and to basically show them a bit about um, a specific topic of physics that IAPS members choose in the, the annual general meeting. Um, and of course, essentially show the magic of physics on that topic and try to get some interest from uh, potential future students, which of course we know is something very important um, that um, it's really important that we try to give visibility to, to physics that uh, oftentimes is uh, the lack of visibility is one of the reasons why uh, we don't get um, as many people interested in, in physics as we um, of course would have with a, a really good um, and intense effort in outreach that we, we try to get our members to do. Uh, and then we have uh, JIAPS, uh, the, the annual volume uh, publication of, of IAPS, where we try to show a lot of these activities, not only activities that are uh, essentially coordinated by um, the, the executive committee or by an, an organizing committee, um, but also activities that are done at the national or local level by our members. So essentially to talk um, a bit more about the International Conference of Physics Students, this is the um, fundamentally the IAPS founding event. As I had mentioned to you, the, um, the first um, international conference was actually organized in 1986. So before IAPS was um, actually formalized, uh, and that served, um, it was a very, a very uh, small and modest conference um, organized in Hungary, but it served as the launching pad for discussions that eventually led uh, to, to those students um, founding IAPS. And of course, um, 30 uh, some years later, here we are. Um, this conference is basically open to all students that are um, either direct members of IAPS as individual members or that are affiliated with IAPS um, national or local committees. But usually uh, for, for the past um, uh, several years, we've had between um, 350 around that uh, and almost 500 students. For example, the last, um, the last uh, ICPS that uh, actually happened uh, physically was in 2019 in, in Cologne, Germany, um, and that counted with the participation of almost 500 students uh, from um, around 50 countries. So that's um, really, it, it's really something that uh, is tending to scale up. And of course, uh, that it's natural that that happens as more and more students become aware of IAPS and as more and more countries uh, start to 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 notice the the existence of IAPS, and in this um, conference every year, there's guests and student lectures, there's excursions, poster sessions. So the idea is to um, integrate um, not only let's say activities of academic interest in as many areas as, of physics as possible, but also social and cultural activities where students really get to engage um, with, um, with each other's cultures, for example, where students get to um, share a bit about uh, each other's perspectives as students in their own countries. So this is really a place to build a sense of, of community, uh, which is why it's, um, it was truly sad that we weren't able to have uh, ICPS uh, last year because of the pandemic, of course, it was supposed to be in Mexico um, the first time that it, that ICPS was going to be outside of Europe. Um, but that has been pushed to 2022. Um, hopefully, we can really have uh, an amazing conference that year, um, which will, in fact, be the, the first one that it is uh, outside of Europe. And that's a truly major milestone in this goal that we have more and more of um, really making IAPS um, a lot more than just uh, its, um, its current European core. So in each um, ICPS, we have um, usually two um, what we call worldwide grants um, of up to 1,000 euros to try to cover 
the costs of participation in the um, in the conference, both in terms of the participation fee and in terms of transportation costs um, up to a certain value. This is to try, um, of course, it's very hard for an organization like HIAPS that doesn't get a lot of um, funding. Um, so we basically only uh, give out as, as many grants, so two grants uh, as we actually can from the, the support that we uh, and funding that we get. Uh, but essentially the idea is to try to um, minimize as much as possible the factor of, um, of financial capacity as a um, determining factor uh, in terms of students' participation in ICPS. Of course, we know that um, unfortunately uh, financial difficulties um, usually are a very big barrier in terms of students participating in these events. So as much as possible, we try to develop these uh, tools or these mechanisms to um, at least get some students to not um, uh, have those difficulties uh, impeding their participation. Um, of course, this year, um, the conference is being adapted to an online format. It is being organized by um, students uh, affiliated with IAPS in Denmark. Um, initially, it was, of course, predicted to be um, a, a physical event, but it's moved to a, uh, I believe, a three-day uh, online conference uh, where we hopefully can get possibly even more uh, participation uh, and from more countries than, usual, than usually we would have in a physical event, um, mostly due to those um, financial difficulties not being, of course, felt as much when it comes to uh, having an, an online event. So at least that could maybe open the door to um, students from many other countries and students that usually would have a lot of uh, transportation costs to actually be able to attend the conference this year. So basically, I just want to show you here um, some, let's say, memorabilia from past uh, conferences. Uh, so you have there the um, um, starting conference of IAP. So it was actually called ICSP um, when it was first organized in 1986. Um, so you can see there it's um, it's been almost 35 years since that um, first uh, page of the leaflet of the, the program of the conference. Um, we have progressed a lot, a lot since then um, in terms of graphics, of course, uh, but this goes to show um, also with those from 1994, 2003, uh, and the one with the, uh, the cutting of the cake um, to celebrate the 15 years of IAPS in 2002. This goes to show that the spirit of IAPS uh, translated in this, the International Conference uh, of Physics Students, is, um, is really being kept alive across the, the years. And of course, the last uh, conference that happened, you can see there uh, several uh, hundreds of, of the students that participated from um, many dozens of countries um, truly united to make this photo happen. Um, so this is uh, this is basically the spirit of IAPS encapsulated in one picture. So going to planks uh, and not to provide too much detail because uh, Sophia is going to uh, talk a bit more about this year's competition. But to sum it up, it's basically uh, competition for master or bachelor students that organize in teams of three to four students. It's a weekend of competition, symposium, uh, some social events and exchange. Uh, usually we, we have some members of, uh, of IAPS that organize national preliminary competition where um, they basically uh, decide out of that competition which teams from their country are going to the actual Planck's final competition. The last uh, one in, was in physical presence in Odense, uh, Denmark. Uh, last year in December, the um, students from London affiliated with IAPS organized um, a Xeroth version 
of the the uh, an online uh, physics competition uh, and this year the the first um the first one organized um to actually be an online competition is going to be organized um, by students from uh, Porto in Portugal. So basically to talk a bit um, about the journal of IAPS, uh, which is called JIAPS, you can see there the um, actually the first uh, JIAPS that happened in, um, that was published in 1996, and the last one that was published last year in, in September, um, of course, again, the graphics um, are quite different, but the spirit is always the same. This is about reporting about IAPS events and projects. Um, this is about describing events by member committees and showing uh, the, the spirit of, of physics students organizing to, to provide their students and their communities with an opportunity to uh, look a bit more into uh, what physics is and, and its several manifestations. There's also uh, scientific or general interest articles or advocacy related articles uh, written by students. And we also have uh, the JIPS article contest and the creative competition, which sort of uh, serve as a way to um, let the creativity of students really show uh, more um, artistically in, in the side of the creative competition and uh, in the case of the article contest to give students an opportunity to um, start testing a bit their um, writing skills in terms of scientific articles. So this is um, also a way to uh, make them a bit less nervous about the, the, the whole process when uh, of course they naturally uh, actually have to publish uh, articles. So um, basically you can see there a uh, general schedule of our activities. Of course, there's um, usually the first months of the year are um, a bit tougher um, because in a lot of countries that coincides with um, exam times. Um, but of course we have the various activities across the year that I've um, uh, talked to you about. And hopefully as we get more and more members, we can really start uh, filling this up a bit more. So in terms of uh, external relations, which is something that um, I'm more directly involved in uh, within the executive committee, um, as I had mentioned to you, the European Physical Society, EPS, is, um, has been our main partner for a very long time. Right now, we are trying to um, become affiliated with the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics, IUPAP. Uh, so this is a really important effort for us because, of course, IUPAP is uh, sort of the international standard in terms of um, um, professional physics organizing, let's say. Uh, so we really want to make that happen. And we also participate in the informal forum of international student organizations, which is basically a um, gathering every six months of um, uh, student organizations uh, at the international level from various areas, from uh, history to vet veterinary students to medicine students. Uh, so areas not only of science, but of other areas. Uh, and this allows us to sort of um, share experiences on how to best manage organizations. And it's very useful in that sense. Right now, we're also trying to create um, a lot of new opportunities for uh, the members of IAPS through uh, collaboration agreements uh, and through outreach to many organizations. Of course, the Africa School of Fundamental Physics and, and Applications uh, is uh, truly important for us. Um, and, and it is something that we've um, really put a lot of uh, effort into uh, because we know that through this, um, this collaboration, uh, we can really get a lot of engagement from uh, students in various countries in, in Africa um, and to really organize at the local level to provide opportunities for students um, and for them, of course, to truly participate in the International Association of Physics Students. And again, to make it a lot more international than it actually is right now. Uh, and we also have several other organizations. Uh, I won't go into detail, but basically the Optical Society 
which also has a lot of student chapters that we want to uh, make a connection to. Um, and you have there several other physics unions and associations uh, which we really value and will open up a lot of doors for the students of, of IAPS to participate uh, in um, conferences, in journals, for example. This is, um, these are really important efforts that we're trying to push uh, forward this year. So um, to finalize uh, my part of the presentation, you can see there the current uh, nine members of the executive committee. One of them, um, Molly McDonough, um, was our events manager, uh, had to resign because she started uh, a job that is taking up a lot of, of her time and it may, made things a bit incompatible. Um, but essentially, this is the team that is uh, leading the IAPS ship this year. Um, at least in my view, I think we're um, doing a um, a well enough job um, and really making things happen. We have a lot of working groups for uh, students that are affiliated to, with IAPS to participate uh, in helping the executive committee to really carry out its tax, tasks and to make as, as, as many projects as possible uh, really happen um, on all sides from PR uh, to uh, advocacy and outreach. And of course, you have there our social media on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and our website if you want to check out a bit more about us. And of course, you can always reach us in that email, ec at iaps.info. So uh, with this, I just want to finalize by saying that, of course, IAPS is for physics students and by physics students, this is essentially our motto. And with that, I would like to give the word to uh, Elora McFall, our advocacy and uh, outreach manager, to talk to you a bit more about uh, her work and the dimensions of advocacy and outreach in the perspective of IAPS. So, Elora. Hey, everyone. Yeah, as Dorje mentioned, I'm Elora, the advocacy and outreach manager here at IAPS for this current year. Um, do you want to go on to the next slide? Is that my advocacy one? Um, so basically, I have quite a dual role here at IAPS. Um, I do everything to do with advocacy and outreach, which, you know, they could kind of have their own roles, but um, they go well together as well. So on the advocacy side, in general, my role would be to manage any advocacy issues and investigate topics of importance to members. So currently at the moment, I'm organizing a student forum in March to discuss different universities' responses to the pandemic and find out from students what is and isn't working. And hopefully afterwards, we'll be able to write up a report that we can share to the students and that they can pass on to their departments and maybe get some change made for the academic year when they hear what has worked for other universities or what hasn't worked. Um, it's also my responsibility to advocate for students' rights at local and international levels. So IAPS has the responsibility of addressing matters related to students' rights, and we take a stand whenever these are in any way undermined. Typically, this is in the form of statements, um, like the picture in the middle, that's the statement that I released just before Christmas. Um, so, Recent statements that we've had are about the breach of fundamental rights of Belarusian students. IAP supports for the Friday for Futures movement and about climate change and IAP solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm also here to organize and support any new advocacy related events. Um, last August, um, since we couldn't have our annual conference, Duarte organized the IAPS at a distance event. So we had loads of online lectures and conversations and talks, which were really great. And they're available on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Um, you might see some familiar faces in the purple one there. We've got Christine Ketavi and Steve, um, who gave a talk on physics education. Um, so hopefully I'm aiming to run a series of advocacy related talks or some kind of 
informal chat with people who do a lot of advocacy related work in the physics community throughout the end of March and April. So you can keep an eye out for that on our social media too. And if anyone ever has any questions about advocacy or you have an interest in doing an advocacy related event or there's an issue that you'd like to raise with us, um, I'm happy to hear from you and support you and my email's at the bottom of the slide. Um, it's also going to be on the next one. So if Dorota, you could do the next one, please. So as I mentioned, <laughs> I wear two hats here at IAPS. I'm both advocacy and outreach. So when it comes to outreach, my main role is managing educational and informational events. So we have two flagship events that occur annually. So there's the International Day of Light, which will be on the 16th of May this year and during usually a period of three days, members run activities for the general public and they focus on the science of light and its different technical applications. So there's lots of opportunity to do different kinds of events or talks, whatever you're interested in on that day. And we also have the IF School Day as Duarte mentioned in November. So this is our own way at IFs of celebrating the World Day of World Science Day for Peace and Development and physics students worldwide organize activities for school students based on a pre-decided topic which is usually voted on at the AGM. So this year it was decided that school day 2021 the topic will be gastrophysics. Um, once again with outreach I always encourage and support other outreach events organized by local and national committees or anyone else who's interested and in the blue here on the slide, we have several outreach related grants that are available that I'm sure Owen will be mentioning when you get to his role as treasurer. So just to mention them, there's an IAPS light grant for the International Day of Light. So that's still open until the middle of April. We have an IAPS outreach grant, which runs all year. So if you ever come up with an idea you'd like to do for outreach, and you need a bit of extra support from it, you can apply for that throughout the year from December till August. And we also have the IAPS School Day Grant, which usually opens the end of September or at the start of October for events that will be run on November for the school day. Um, I think that's everything on my part, Dorte, if you want to pass it on to whoever's next. But I'll be here afterwards for our discussion and I'd love to hear from you all how we at IAPS can support you as members and what we can do to make your time as IAPS members really beneficial to you. If you think of anything we're not doing already or anything that would be really helpful to you, I'd love to hear about it. Thank you very much, Laura. Um, so following uh, advocacy and outreach, and I want to pass the word on to um, Owen Higgins, our treasurer, so we can talk to you a bit about um, his main um, tasks in the IAPS Executive Committee. Owen? Thank you very much, Dorothy. Uh, you go on to the next slide there already. Um, yeah, so I'm Owen Higgins. I'm uh, astrophysics student and the IAPS treasurer for this year. So I'm going to talk very briefly about my role and some of the ways that it helps uh, physics students who are members of IAPS. Um, I put the few, a bunch of different tasks that I have to do in a few buckets here. Um, some of which are just keeping our association running, very important but quite functional. And uh, some of which actually reach out to help members quite a bit more. So in um, an accounting sense, I handle our bank accounts and transfers of money and invoices and anything like that. I have to keep records, which IAPS has a quite robust kind of accounting system and we get our accounts audited um, by volunteer auditors each year. Um, the treasurer is also responsible for fundraising. Anytime I can get help with that, I'll take it. Um, both seeking sponsorships from businesses or institutions and looking for grants from such institutions and from NGOs where IAPS can apply for its events. Um, one example of that is funding that the European Physical Society very generously helped us out with 
um, each year a certain amount of sponsorship for some of the events that we do. And then we charge some fees for our members, um, which I'm responsible for collecting. And this is a very valuable resource for us because this is money we can spend freely on grants and on members' activities uh, where they come up throughout the year. And events, supporting our members' events is another thing that I do as treasurer, which is very important. Um, I sometimes advise event organizers on financial practice and give them advice on how events have worked before, how they've collected fees and what to charge and things like that. Um, we support IAP's major events, that is ICPS and Planks, with a financial guarantee to ensure that those events can go ahead smoothly and they have the confidence to put on a large event for a large number of students. And then, of course, the treasurer plans and advertises grants for our members. So I can talk a bit more about those grants in specific. Yeah. Um, we have a pretty wide range of different grants. Like we, a lot of the spending that we do is sending money back to our members in the ways that can be most beneficial to them and that can help our IAPS community the most. Um, so we offer a few different grants at different times throughout the year. We have grants for organizers of events. And these are the exchange grant for two IPS members in different countries who want to meet up and have an exchange, sending students from one country to the other, have a reciprocal event like that. Uh, we fund collaborations between our members and students in other disciplines. We've had a very successful uh, event between IAPS and the International Students of History Association for a few years. And then our main grant is the IAPS Member Action Program, where we can fund up to a thousand euro for uh, physics conferences and events that our members are putting on, where there's an international dimension, which means they're collaborating with another IAPS member in another country, or else a certain proportion of the attendance is for students from outside of the country. So this is our way of, in these ways, we kind of encourage uh, international participation in events, we encourage students to travel and see other cultures and meet other students from other places, which is really the aim that IAPS was founded on all the way back in 1986. Uh, we gave out grants for outreach and education, which Laura mentioned already, of course, our grant for the International Day of Light, um, our grant for our school day event, where I've included a picture here of the most recent school day, um, some events were put on in Split and Zagreb in Croatia. And then we have a general outreach grant, which we use for kind of non-specific outreach activities throughout the year. This is something we like introduce specifically to support events that happen at different times um, to better facilitate our members. We give some grants to physics students specifically, and these are supports for our events and for attending them, which Duarte also mentioned. There's the ICPS Worldwide Grant, which funds the participation fee and some travel costs for students, which allows us to get students from much further abroad to attend our ICPS, which are almost always in Europe, and then would otherwise be possible. And also the Planck's Global Grant, which we've used to allow uh, teams to attend Planck's from further afield this year in a similar fashion. We give grants to student associations to specifically new student associations that are started up have sometimes significant costs in legal fees for registering and to host a new event to kickstart themselves. And we give some support for that to give them the best start that we can. Uh, in our last term, we awarded over 7,500 euros in grants to members. Um, it's been higher and lower before, but we try to invest the money that we have uh, as well as we can and support as many different projects as we can. And that's one of the main things that I do as treasurer. So if anyone has any questions about like IPS's grants or financials, I'd be happy to answer them after this point. But I can hand it over to our next EC member. Thank you very much, Owen. Um, yes, I believe we can now go to uh, Ruhi Chitra, the current IPS secretary. Ruhi. So hello. Um, yep, yeah, I'm the secretary of the executive committee. Um, so that means I handle just general administration. Um, I'm changing how general meetings are run and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say um, why I joined IAPS in the first place. So I think this is similar to many other people. 
Um, I went to the International um, Conference for Physics Students that Duarte mentioned. Um, and it was honestly the best conference I've ever been to. It was amazing. Um, just being around physics students from all around the world um, who are really excited about physics and with top quality speakers, Nobel laureates and things like that. It was amazing. If you ever get a chance, definitely go. Um, and then from then onwards, I just wanted to get more involved. And I, I'm pretty sure so many other people do as well. Um, in that conference, I saw people who'd been there eight years in a row and things like that. So it really is something that people really get hooked on and it's really good. Um, so one thing is if you're interested in forming a student group or something like that, or getting more involved in any way, um, feel free to reach out to me. So um, that would just be my first name, dot my last name at iapps.info. All of the email addresses of everyone is on the iapps website as well. Um, especially if you're interested in actually forming some kind of event of your own, um, I would be very happy to help as well. Um, we want to help as much as possible, as uh, hopefully is clear from everyone else's, what everyone else has said. Um, so yeah, hopefully through this session, we can hear how we can help you the most as well. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you very much, Ruhi. Um, now I just have uh, a sort of testimony from our current um, recruitment manager who wasn't able to, to be here, uh, but he basically just wanted to um, pass along the, the idea of how quickly things can progress in terms of recruitment. Uh, so basically this year, uh, he has already reached out to several universities and student associations from different regions around the world. Uh, and of course, the, the main purpose uh, that he has is to try to make the representation uh, across the various continents uh, more uniform within IAPS, um, which is very much uh, a necessity, as you saw from the map. Uh, and of course, this year, we've already been able to uh, start doing, doing that. Um, naturally, we've had uh, a few more uh, student groups from um, Europe also joining us, from Greece, France, and Denmark. Uh, but we've also had, uh, for example, a, a second local committee from Iran joining and also uh, local committees from Guatemala and the Dominican Republic uh, joining very recent, recently. So um, this is just to show a bit of how, um, how quickly student organizations can start joining IAPS. And it's basically just a matter of uh, will, as, as Ruhi was saying, um, it's, um, we're here to um, provide you with all of the information and to give all support um, that is necessary to start your own local student organization uh, or to develop uh, one if you're already involved in one uh, to make sure that you have all of the tools necessary to, um, to have activities and to participate in IAPS um, as a um, uh, an ever-growing uh, community, let's say. Uh, so basically now, um, on the part of the executive committee, we are done. Um, but I would invite uh, Sophia from the um, organizing committee of Planks just to give a, a brief presentation also on the activity, uh, since it's going to be in about three months. Um, and any student uh, from bachelor's and master's that uh, wants to participate can still um, uh, form a team and uh, register until about mid-March. Uh, so I think it's good to, to hear from um, Sophia a bit. Sophia, you there? Uh, yes, hi. Hi, everyone. Okay. Uh, will that, uh, I think you need to allow me to share my screen if possible. Okay, let me just stop my share. Ketevi, can you allow a Sophia screen share or would it be easier? I also have the presentation if necessary. She should be able to share the screen. I'll participate. Oh, now I am, now I am, good. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so um, hi everyone. Like, uh, like Duarte said, my name is Sophia. 
and I'm um, the coordinator, let me put here the laser pointer. I'm the coordinator of, of Planks 2021. Um, you already know what, what is Planks, but I still have some, some sort of intro here. And the best intro I can have is, I don't know if this will work. Um, but, okay. Okay, so I hope you, you managed to, to all see the video. Pretty much, uh, I always enjoyed that video. Uh, uh, I didn't get the chance to participate in, in Planks 2017, but that video really sums up what Planks is. And much like the word said, it is the physics competition of IAPS. And it was created in 2014 by NC the Netherlands, so the National Committee of IAPS in the Netherlands. And here you see a photo of the opening symposium where Stephen Hawking was one of the speakers. So uh, like you saw in the video, uh, the students compete in teams of three to four members. Uh, there are the prizes for the top three teams. There's a scientific symposium, like you see this one, and much like in any IAPS event, socializing and exchange of ideas are two of the most important aspects. Um, I also have another video. Uh, I don't know if I should play it or not, Duarte. Maybe give me your opinion. Uh, so this video was of the last planks that actually happened physically. It's a longer video where you also see the socializing aspects and it showcases a bit what IAPS is and what planks is. Uh, Duarte, do you think I should show it? Yeah, let's think of it, please. Good, if you're able to see it, perfect. It's... Uh, although we don't hear the voice, yeah? Uh, sorry, you were saying that you don't actually hear the, the sound, right? The sound we don't hear, yeah. Okay, so I can, the sound, there's there's just some music, so worst case scenario, you're missing the music. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs>
So yeah, sorry for, for the sound. Uh, I should have probably checked that better. Uh, but hopefully you got an idea of what of what uh, Planks is from the trailer, uh, physics team competition and all of that. And from Planks 2019, from this video, you can see that it's not only a competition, but also a very interesting uh, uh, event with a symposium and socializing activities and all of that. The point now is, uh, as you all know, due to the pandemic um, that we are currently living, uh, Planks 2021 is going to be online. Uh, as Duarte said, uh, we are organizing it from Porto, so here is actually a photo of, of the River Douro that crosses Porto. Um, and this is the team that is behind it, Duarte is also here. Um, and we're all students, uh, or, or physics students, either PhD, masters or, or undergrads. Um, either from Porto or alumni from, from the University of Porto. So the event is going to be online and for that we came up with a program that uh, pretty much has activities around the clock so that any student, no matter where they are, can join, um, can join the event. So uh, the event starts uh, in, in, on the 6th of May, uh, Thursday, and we start around midday with the opening ceremony. Then we have the first guest lecture as traditional from planks, and we have what we will call digital coffee breaks. We're going to have a lot of those throughout the event, where pretty much uh, we are going to be on a Zoom chat and we're going to relax and talk with each other and have some coffee or some, some tea. Then we're going to have one of the first quizzes, an evening break, because then we start the first lecture, the GMT minus eight lecture, because we plan on having lectures uh, uh, from each sort of time zone. GMT, GMT minus eight and GMT plus eight. And then it's sort of a warming up, relaxing, getting ready because the competition starts at midnight in Portugal. And the competition, as you see here, will last throughout the whole day of Friday and then 12 more hours. So the actual competition will be open for 36 hours instead of the usual four. This because again, people from different time zones are then able to compete. But also uh, it is a, a, an interesting way of overcoming doing it online because then people have access to any book or any material they want. And if we do it, we're doing it in this way because then it's like a hackathon where people have to, to organize themselves and solve the different problems they will be receiving. And um, they, those problems will also be a bit harder than the usual of, of planks. So, so it will be 36 hours to solve the 12 problems. As I said, we're going to have several guest lectures spread out through the event, and we're going to have the digital coffee breaks uh, the same, uh, spread out through the event, throughout the event, and we have one of the workshops already on Friday. Then on Saturday, the competition, like I said, like I told you, um, ends uh, at midday on Saturday, Portuguese time. Um, and after that, we uh, want to show you, we're going to discuss first a bit of the problems in an informal uh, conversation, uh, discuss, uh, the teams will be able to discuss between themselves, uh, that problem was really hard, oh, how did you solve that problem, and also with some of the, the professors and markers of the, the, of the problems. Then we're going to, you're not coming to Porto, but we still want to show you what we do there in terms of research. So DFA is, is our department. So we're going to give some talks about uh, that showcases what our department does. And then we're going to have a nation's coffee break. And this is um, one of the, the best aspects of an ICPS and even of planks. Uh, at every ICPS, there is a nation's uh, evening, a nation's party, where each uh, group of students from each country showcases a bit of their food, of their drinks, of their culture to the other students. And just because our event is online, we still wanted to have that. So we call it a coffee break because for example, for Portugal, Portuguese time, uh, um, in our time zone, it, was, it will be a dinner. But then if someone is in, in the US, it may be uh, lunch. So we call it coffee break. But the goal is to showcase uh, the best from your country. Then we're going to have uh, the last day with again, some digital coffee breaks, some socializing. Uh, the last quiz uh, early in the morning for us so that students that couldn't join the first quiz, quiz are able to join now. Then the last guest lecture and the closing ceremony where we're going to announce who were the winners. So we plan to do this all through Zoom using Zoom webinar and Zoom meeting. I won't get into a lot of details, but pretty much Zoom like we are here today. 
and to submit and uh, for the teams to receive the problems, we're going to use the Moodle platform. This is really handy because then uh, it's all in the same platform. The markers will also have access to it, so uh, it should work completely fine. And also we're going to use Discord so that uh, we can talk um, with each other. Uh, the participants can talk with each other, with UC. And so there's just pretty much the place where everyone is going to be online at all times. Um, we already have some guest lectures confirmed. Um, we plan on having eight, so there's two that still are a, a bit of a surprise and are still confirming, but this is already the sixth. We, as I said, we're going to try and have two guest lectures per uh, time zone, um, at least two per time zone. Uh, so we already have here, all the European slots are filled um, and we already have uh, one from the US and one from, from Asia and Oceania. Um, other activities, like I told you, uh, we're going to have some workshops. Uh, we are in conversations with IBM to have a workshop regarding quantum computing. And we also plan on having a workshop uh, um, about machine learning or AI, artificial intelligence. So areas that are of interest to, to physics students and also to employers after you finish your degree, but that are not exactly physics. Um, and again, the most important part or one of the most important parts is the social activities. Like I told you, we're going to have a quiz and we're going to have what we would call a workshop, workshop of Portuguese stuff. And we left it uh, vague like this because we uh, want it to be a surprise, but we want to showcase, you're not coming to Portugal, but we want, still want to show you our food, our culture. So that's pretty much what this workshop will be. Uh, so now the important question, and Duart already explained a bit how you can participate. So you can participate via a preliminary competition. And this year we have these, these preliminaries confirmed from these countries. So if you are from one of these countries, you will need to register with, with, um, to their preliminary events and then win their preliminary events to then participate in our planks. But you can also participate as an individual team and registration is already open and it will close on Pi Day, March 14th. So you have roughly one month to register your team if you want to join us. Um, because these teams, these teams registering as individual teams uh, did not compete in a preliminary, if we have more than one team per country, we will uh, select the team that participates in a random way. So um, to participate, there is a, a small registration fee of five euros per person, which means that a team of four students will pay 20 euros. And it includes access to all the activities, all the workshops, guest lectures, the competition itself, everything. Access to the Discord, to the Planks 2021 Discord, to, to communicate with all the other participants. And uh, of course, it gives you a chance of winning one of the, the three Planks 2021 prizes that I will tell you after what are the, their values. You'll be able to interact with the guest lecturers and the workshop leaders. And of course, we are going to uh, mail you um, a merchandise kit with with some surprises, but at least the Planks T-shirt, the traditional Planks T-shirt, will is going to be there. Uh, with this, and Owen already mentioned, we have the Planks 2021 grant, which is also open, um, much like the registration, and the the IAPS is going to support the participation uh, fee of up to ten teams. And for that, you need to register with us, write a motivation letter uh, explaining why you want to take part in Planks make a short video uh, also explaining why you want to join us in May. And for the short video, it doesn't need to be uh, something very complicated, uh, a lot of editing, nothing like that. You can just pick up your phone, join with your team or do a Zoom chat and record it and just uh, explain why you want to join us in May. And you can think outside the box. You can really, uh, there's no limit to your imagination. And we uh, really, um, we, are, we are expecting very interesting videos from you. Uh, and if you want to, you can also send some financial status documents that uh, can explain why you will need the grant. And all of this needs to be sent to the EC email and also to the organizing committee email of blanks. Um, and the video needs to be uploaded to social media. But all of this is on our website, all the details. So um, you can just find them um, on the website that I will tell you at the end of the presentation. So with this, I already need to thank the sponsors we have. We have the European Physical Society that much like Duarte and Owen said, is one of the biggest sponsors of IAPS and of IAPS events. Um, and again, they are helping us this edition of Planks uh, 
the, they are making these initial planks possible. We also have our departments, the physics and astronomy department of the Univers University of Porto. And we also have the Portuguese uh, Physical Society. Uh, so with this, uh, I would like to conclude with the top 10 facts about Planck's 2021 online. So we expect 50 teams, and with this, I already like to tell you that we um, already expect 27 countries, so teams from 27 countries, from all the continents except for Oceania. Uh, we have eight guest lectures planned. I already showed you six of, this, of those. Um, 12 problems uh, that need to be completed in 36 hours. The fee is five euros per person, and the prizes are the following. It's more than 1,000 euros in prizes. And it's a four day event with varieties around the clock. So the first ever Planks Online or Plankathon. So with this, I would like to say goodbye, which is adios in Portuguese and um, follow us on social media, on our website, all the information is there. So if you have any questions, just please be my guest and ask us or write us an email or anything. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Sofia. Um, now I believe, um, Ketevi, I think we can uh, just open this up to uh, some questions and we, we can answer any questions that may exist. I see there are some, uh, there's already some discussion about the um, more advocacy side of, uh, of IAPS. Uh, yes, uh, there were a, uh, a couple of questions uh, on the chat that uh, Elora has uh, answered. Uh, maybe Elora can summarize uh, for us the question and, and answer briefly. Hey, yeah, just give me a second. I'm just going to put the chat somewhere I can see it on the screen at the same time if you give me two seconds um, I'll pop this back up here okay I'll quickly go through the few questions I got if you like and just what I replied to summarize them and if anyone else has any other questions or things they'd like to ask I'm more than happy to talk about it so just going to the start of this. So I was asked about how IAPS is making sure that students participate in science policy decision-making, which is a great question. And I guess because I'm advocacy and outreach at the moment, there's a lot of work involved in the combined roles. Um, it's really the work of two EC members basically turned into one. So I'm pretty stretched at the moment between stuff that I'm doing. And a lot of my focus is trying to improve both advocacy and outreach things that IAPS do for next year and just kind of building strong foundations. So I would love to have more of a focus on science policy, but without working group members or people who tell me they're interested in doing something with it. I don't honestly really have the time to be doing that myself on top of the other stuff I do. But if there's people interested in it, I would love to facilitate it and get some discussions going and see if they'd like to have a workshop or something to do with it because science policy is so important and definitely something I'm interested in myself to learn more about. Um, the second one is about how do I continue advocating in a science resistant community where people think that science is not a lucrative field and how can you overcome such challenges? Um, this is brilliant as well. And you know, I think it's become even more clear at the moment when there's so much talk about vaccines. And anytime I go on Facebook and there's an article about vaccines, you'll see so many people commenting a load of misinformation about it and saying, oh, I'm not getting it, I don't trust them and saying all these completely wrong facts because they just don't really know about it. Um, I know it can be hard to talk to and reason with people who feel very strongly against science or they're scared of something, but it really helps to be empathetic towards them and understand what's really worrying them. Um, sorry, I'm just keeping an eye on the chat at the same time. 
but as long as you're understanding and you're willing to take some time to have a proper conversation with them about it, it usually does get them somewhere. They mightn't change their mind overnight. And there's definitely some people as well that will be stubborn and never change your mind. Um, so sometimes you just have to say, okay, it's not worth fighting over <laughs> a certain topic or something. Um, but what's good as well that you really don't see is that honestly, the people who constantly complain about science and will be posting all over social media that science is bad, they're a loud minority. So don't let that put you off if you're constantly seeing people online posting about like misinformation or disinformation about science. Um, all the people who aren't replying to it or who aren't posting themselves, they probably don't agree, you know, um, they're, they're really a loud minority, that group of people. Um, sorry, I'm just continuing to read. Okay, how do you manage advocacy and research as a student? So what I forgot to say when I was talking is I'm not a student at the moment. I just finished my undergraduate in applied physics. So finishing last semester in the middle of a pandemic was pretty stressful. And I decided to take a break this year and work on science communication and outreach stuff, which I'm really interested in. So I've been doing lots of different things throughout the year. So thankfully I don't have actual exams to be studying for, and I'm not jealous of anyone who's doing, finishing up exams at the moment or anything. So I have a bit more time than I usually would as a student, which is why I'm putting so much into it at the moment. Um, just reading the chat from Lawrence. So one point of advocacy that I have been recently thinking that African physicists and physics students could be about is free, open and reliable broadband internet availability. That is internet as a public works good and as a science productivity and socioeconomic development. Maybe. Yeah, that's definitely really important. And I think that's something maybe you could talk to the ASP about and get their opinions on it because I from Ireland, I don't really have that much experience with it, but I think it's definitely something that you could try to lobby for or get more places that have free internet access or something like that. But I agree, it's definitely really important. And that's where stuff come in on our side as well, because even if we can't directly help you fix that issue, you can come to us and talk to us about what we can do to help with the situation and accommodate for it. So if you don't have internet access directly or you find it really hard joining Zoom calls or live talks or anything like that, let us know and we'll work around. Maybe it would be better for everyone if we did a recorded talk and we sent it out or we made our talk available on YouTube or something. We're always here to help and figure out how we can accommodate everyone and what works best. Um, does that answer your question, Lawrence? Does anyone else have anything to ask me or anyone else from the EC? Yeah, other questions or other comments? Or... So maybe just, uh, this is Christine, so hi. Um, hi, Christine. Excellent, so thank you so much for this wonderful summary and all the different aspects as well of the organization. So just maybe to, to catch up and to follow up from what uh, Lawrence was proposing, any sponsor, because a lot, as you said, this is for students, but by students as well. So a lot of the students then have um, now some work and potentially they are involved in different uh, companies. So whether this is maybe with IT, so are you trying as well to get some partnership from different IT company? And there it could be the possibility as well to foresee more how potential uh, free internet access could be. So that would be one of potential ideas. So, how is the link between so your team now, all the students, and the students that used to be part of the organization, the alumni? So do you keep contact and could they provide, for instance, new partnerships that could potentially be useful? Yeah, that's that's a really good idea. I think Duarte, would you like to answer this since you're our expert on external relations today? Yeah, I can I can uh, talk a bit about it. Yeah, we, um, 
we do have uh, sort of a, an alumni uh, wing in in IAPS. Uh, in fact, the um, the members of IAPS every year elect two representatives of the the alumni of IAPS, uh, so we can try as best as possible to keep track of the people that have been part uh, of IAPS, uh, especially the people that have most been active, either as executive committee members or working group members. Uh, or organizers of major events, for example. Um, but, but in fact, that is also something that um, uh, needs some work in the sense that you're, um, that you're talking about. So in trying to sort of leverage those connections uh, to make sure that we um, have as, as much influence as possible in terms of um, representing students. And in fact, this, this matter of um, of um, uh, having um, reliable internet access um, has become become even more, um, um, let's say, present uh, during the the time of the pandemic because of the the whole issue um, in a lot of countries of uh, trying to um, move um, school online and everything and trying to have as many people as possible uh, have internet access. And this is precisely one of those matters. Um, in fact, I, um, I had the, the responsibility of, of advocacy uh, before Laura uh, and several of the things that, that I was thinking about was the, the necessity of IAPS engaging more and more in those efforts of defining some priorities in terms of, of public policy that would benefit uh, physics students and would benefit people, um, uh, so young people that aren't yet uh, studying in higher education, uh, but might uh, choose to um, study physics. And for example, one thing, um, one example that I have um, was a, um, a sort of collaboration with the European Physical Society uh, where I realized that two years before um, my time in the executive committee, uh, one member of the executive committee was working on a proposal to send, um, so this was focused in, in Europe because it was in, the, in connection with uh, EPS, but to send a proposal to the European Commission uh, to uh, provide more funding to exchange programs uh, but in a way that would actually allow students uh, that don't have as much uh, financial resources to be able to have the same opportunity for um, exchange programs and for uh, quality internships that could, can, could at the same time um, uphold um, the interests of students, but also working standards. So all of those concerns uh, in terms of the, the conditions that students have to actually study and to actually be productive um, academically, but also the, the working conditions of students um, that are doing internships, for example. All of those things are um, aspects that I, I really strongly believe and wish IAP starts picking up more and more. Uh, but as, as Alor was mentioning, that depends on us having um, as many volunteers as possible to start that conversation, that discussion, and to reach a certain conclusion in terms of what IAPS can release um, publicly and send to um, decision makers that can actually uh, take a look at that and think that maybe that those are good solutions to adopt. This is why, for example, um, one of the, um, the things that we're gonna start um, doing very soon as we, for example, start having the, uh, uh, a working external relations group um, is to contact organizations like um, UNESCO, uh, organizations at the European level, at the level of, um, of Africa, South America, and Asia, to try to, to, to have relationships with organizations that can influence policy and to make sure that we can use, use the fact that we are uh, trying to represent physics students to make sure that our voices are actually heard and the voices of the students 
that we are aiming to represent are actually heard. And getting that feedback from students all around the world about what are the problems in each specific place is something very important and is uh, precisely one of the reasons why uh, as we start having the, those relationships with a lot of organizations, it becomes even more important that we get uh, students from a lot more countries than we have right now and from a lot more regions um, because we need to be representative if we want to actually propose um, policy that will benefit all of physics students and not just uh, um, a small part uh, that are already members of IAPS. So uh, hearing from uh, those experiences like the issue that uh, is being raised about the, the uh, about internet access, um, those are precisely the things that we want to work on and any um, student in, in an area of physics that wants to join in um, and be a part of a working group is very much wel uh, welcome to um, to help in those those efforts. Um, I will uh, thanks um, uh, for, for for those answers. I would like to hear from the um, African uh, uh, students that are connected. Any um, your comments? Any questions? Uh, uh, we organize this uh, particular session for you, so. Um, you have heard the material um, and uh, um, I appreciate a lot of comments uh, from uh, uh, Harris. Um, other people um, have comments, uh, the students, African students, uh, we want to hear from you. If, if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead. Uh, Ketevi, can, can yes. you hear me? Yes. Yeah, excuse me. Maybe before this, uh, I would like to, um, to, to ask a question to Duarte. Uh, so my question is related to the, the answer that he just gave. Um, I saw on his talk uh, that uh, two countries, if I remember correctly, from uh, uh, West Africa uh, were somehow uh, related now to IHEPS. And I would like to just hear about um, how uh, how they manage to participate and what type of contact they manage to establish with you? Yeah, so uh, both of those um, of the the local student groups, um, it's one in in uh, each of those of those countries, um, where um, usually these are contacts done. Um, directly to uh, any student group that that may exist um, and those were done by past uh, executive committees I think sometime around two or three years ago um, unfortunately the current situation is that we haven't been um, able for a few months now uh, to really get some contact from uh, and some replies to to emails from those students and in fact, this concern, um, it's something that not only applies to, to those two student groups, uh, but also applies to several um, a bit across the world, that sometimes we, we have a difficulty in maintaining contact with student groups when, um, let's say, the people that had an interest in uh, joining, in linking that student group to IAPS uh, graduate and and so uh, there's um, um, let's say the the connection breaks when new leadership enters and that's actually one one of the the, the problems that we have faced from time to time uh, and something that we have to to continuously work on um, the the side of engagement really at the grassroots not only from leadership of uh, each local and national student group, but really get students uh, that aren't a part of, of leadership, that are just uh, uh, students to really be a part of these working groups, to be a part of um, discussion groups that we also want to um, start this year. So in the case of those two local committees, we did have some, some participation uh, I believe one of them uh, even participated in 
um, the the school day that um, that myself and uh, Laura talked about um, in 2019, I believe. Um, but then some contact along the line was a bit lost, and currently we um, have been unable to really get a reply from them. So this is something that we want to avoid uh, as we get new student groups to join. Um, we want to make sure that we are in as much constant contact as possible uh, and that we really give students um, a sense that they can trust us, they can rely on us for any questions, any doubts, um, any, um, any ideas they may have for their uh, local student group, because that's, that's what we're here for. I mean, we're, um, our task is precisely to uh, support students in, in their, um, their local organizing, to support students in, um, with as, ma as many tools as possible. And it's, uh, it's sad that from time to time we do lose that contact. So right now I can't uh, really tell you about the situation of those student groups. Um, because so what that, we can do, what we can do um, in the future, especially when we have a uh, link for ASP, um, we can follow some of those uh, connections, uh, at least within Africa, where it may be lost, or if uh, people have changed uh, situation, we we'll make sure that uh, new people come in and 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 can carry on, so that the the link is uh, is always maintained. Um, I do really want to hear from the students, uh, uh, African students. I think uh, please uh, speak up in the chat uh, by writing questions or your comments. Uh, 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 thanks very much, uh, uh, Harris. And but there are many other African students here. I'm sure you are thinking something or you have some comments. So please, uh, uh, please uh, step forward. Uh, there is a question in the chat. Um, uh, maybe Duarte and uh, Laura, and, uh, do you guys want to take a stab at it? Um, yeah, I think I think I can um, I can address it a bit. So um, we um, we have uh, a bit of a two-sided approach. Um, this, of course, also depends on the person that is handling these contacts and the recruitment. But we always try to contact both universities and student groups. Um, because on the one hand, uh, we want to make a connection to student groups that already exist. Um, because if they have already organized some activities, if they have experience, uh, that can also um, sort of help us with um, with engaging with the, the students in in that university. But at the same time, contact with the physics departments, with physics societies, for example, uh, with a, a, um, a group like uh, ASP, we really feel that that is important to provide some structure and to provide, um, let's say, a stability to make sure that uh, what I was talking about doesn't happen, so that we start losing contact with students of um, a certain local student group or a certain university um, because the point of contact uh, has graduated and isn't isn't a student anymore. So. Um, in that sense, I, I think that two-sided approach um, is the best one to make sure uh, that we can um, sort of benefit from already existing efforts to organize students in physics and at the same time uh, get the, the necessary support from, from uh, departments, from faculty, from uh, physics societies to make sure that uh, the student groups continue beyond the, the the people that created them. Um, other questions, other comments?
Um, Duarte, uh, um, uh, could you comment a little bit about the structure of uh, um, the local group versus the national committee and uh, what, 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 what do you expect uh, to be the difference between those two? Um, in cases, for example, where you have countries uh, don't have enough representation, is it possible that people from different countries can form a chapter or how, how do you see all of those things? Yeah, uh, so first of all, if you, as Laura is mentioning, um, if you um, don't come up with any question right now, I want to ask us later, you have our uh, email that Laura posted, uh, you can send us any questions there and we'll answer as soon as possible. So uh, to address what, uh, what you're asking, Katevi, uh, so basically, we uh, have a, a structure that is based on national and local student groups. Of course, where there isn't uh, capacity or enough people to form a student group, um, people can just join IAPS as individual members um, and participate uh, through, through that membership. Um, but basically, we usually have the local student groups that can be either students of um, a specific university or students from, let's say, a certain region uh, of, um, of their country. Or in fact, we, um, even though the, ideally the local and national student groups should correspond to a certain, um, to a certain country or a certain region within a country, uh, it is possible uh, under the, the um, the IAP structure to have, for example, a, a group of countries um, be represented by a single national committee. We, in fact, have an example of that with the, um, the Institute of Physics, which is the IAPS national committee that represents both the United Kingdom and Ireland. So, for example, if um, students, um, if there are students from several countries that um, don't feel like they have um, enough uh, students in their own country to form a student group. They can join and basically represent the various countries that they, they study in. Um, and of course, as things develop in the future, uh, they can start separating into different national committees. But there's always this, um, let's say, this easy process where students can um, collaborate, they can organize in student groups without uh, having to be just from a single country or region. Um, okay, I, one, one other question that I would like you to clarify, I know you organize your international conferences in different countries. Um, and you know, how, how do you select the country, uh, the, 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 the host country and and um, if you should organize it in, in an African country in the future, what, what do you expect for that to be, to, to, to come to fruition, to be realized? So basically we have a, a process, this in fact happens also for uh, the, the Planck's competition and any other like major event that, um, that uh, IAPS members decide to create in the future. Basically, uh, every year, um, IAPS members uh, decide on um, among a number of applications from any IAPS member, um, for example, local student groups or national student groups can um, uh, apply to be the organizers of, um, of the conference or of the, the international competition. And every year, uh, IAPS members decide on who will organize each of these events two years later. So things are always decided with two years in advance um, because that's usually what is necessary to start preparing things in terms of uh, sponsorship, in terms of the, the venue where, where things happen. Um, so there's that uh, safety in terms of time. Um, when it comes to, uh, as I had mentioned, like these, uh, events, um, unfortunately, have um, never really uh, been organized outside of Europe. 
Um, we're going to have the, the International Conference in Mexico in 2022, as I mentioned. Um, but of course, we've, for example, um, I uh, have personally talked with um, um, a couple of people from the leadership of our national committee in Morocco, and they said that they uh, would be interested at some point to um, start thinking about organizing the international conference there, um, which would be, um, I mean, with all the, the difficulties that there may exist, because of course in, in, in a lot of, uh, of uh, as we've seen from past editions, in a lot of uh, European uh, universities, it's a lot easier to get uh, the funding, not only from governments, but also from industry, for example, uh, there's a lot of funding that uh, organizing committees get from there um, but whatever added difficulty that could be could exist in terms of funding that's precisely why we are for example um, um, why it's so important for us to connect to the international union of pure and applied physics because they can provide us with important funding um, that would allow us for example to um, help organizing committees that um, could have more difficulty in terms of collecting funds. And of course, those types of connections with many other organizations um, will help us a lot in the future to make sure that um, a, an organizing committee, um, even from a country um, that's um, a lot poorer than the, the countries that um, usually um, where usually students are able to organize these conferences with a lot of funding um, so that we can make sure that we can provide all of the funding necessary to make a successful event. And of course, we know that these, like, these things work in positive feedback. Um, um, the more one invests in terms of having events that attract uh, a lot of uh, physics students from a lot of places, um, the more that will provide um, um, an increasing number of opportunities in the future, uh, and that will help uh, create a sort of positive cycle in terms of, um, of um, um, a local dynamic uh, in, in, in a country um, to provide physics students with as many opportunities as possible. So we really want to make sure and encourage our, our members um, especially outside of, of Europe, to think about organizing these events. And we want to make sure that they feel that they will have the necessary support from executive committees to make all of this happen. Um, okay. Now, other, other questions or comments? Anybody wants any, to say anything or, or wants to comment further? The comment from Tavio, if you can read this one, I think it's interesting huh? because he speaks about the multidisciplinary group, huh? this potential. That's really interesting. If you could elaborate as well on that. Yes. So the um, one of the the most um, amazing things that I've found about IAPS, uh, the more I've gotten involved, uh, is that it is very um, diverse. Uh, also in terms of the, the areas of physics that it represents, but also some areas outside of physics, there's been uh, students, um, we have several student groups that not only represent physics students, but also students from other disciplines of science. And that allows, for example, for some interesting um, multidisciplinary um, exchange of, of knowledge and student experience uh, that adds to uh, the, the, let's say, the IAPS experience in general. So it, it, it is perfectly okay that um, the, the, the group that, um, that uh, Toivo is mentioning of physicists, uh, physics students plus, plus meteorologist students, you'd be very much welcome uh, into IAPS as a, um, uh, a local student group. Um, so that's that's not a problem. That is, in fact, something that we um, look uh, to very positively because we want um, as many students from with as much diverse backgrounds as, as possible. Um, so for the Planck competition, uh, you said the application deadline is in is in March. Is that did I remember correctly? 
and that uh, groups of three or four can join independently as well, right? Is he, those groups have to be members of the IEPS right now, or is it possible for African students, uh, the one connected here who might be interested to join the competition to form a, a group of three or four and, and step forward to, to apply? Do you want to answer, Sophia? Uh, yes, for sure. Um, so yeah, you, you need to be an IAPS member, but you can be an individual member. So you can participate even if you don't belong to a local committee or a national committee. So uh, I was actually starting to copy paste the links to register to put on the chat. Uh, because yeah, any, any physics student, any group of three or four physics students can join in uh, at any time, pretty much. Um, they will just, uh, uh, when registering, they will have to become an IAPS member, but like I said, not a local committee or a national committee. I hope this, this clear yeah, the, the sure. that. And I will put the links, all the links on the chat so that, uh, that you can see everything. And uh, so for the plan competition itself, uh, is that who, who decide on uh, the the questions or the the, the problems uh, is that some international body that um, problems or how how does that work? So that's uh, so the problems for the the final um, are written by professors uh, and um, usually it's the professors of the hosting city. So in our case, even though the event is going to be online, it's still professors from our department here in Porto. So it's going to be 12 problems from um, very close to their research and um, from each of the institutes of research institutes associated with our department. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, Harris has a comment in there. Uh, just to speak to that, that's exactly why we're having this meeting to have a, um, a formal uh, uh, help from, from ASP. Um, for African students to be engaged in, in IEPS. Um, so we are still in the process of uh, establishing that. Um, so the African students who are connected right now and, and maybe others who couldn't join because of various uh, issues or other constraints uh, and, and who are interested, um, certainly you should let us know in the, in the uh, ASP International Organizing Committee, and then we'll discuss with you guys, uh, uh, you know, uh, your formal uh, involvement. But and of course, other other students, uh, ASP or African student, and who uh, you can you can certainly join yourself, or you can form um, a cluster or a chapter in, in your local one, a national one. Uh, we saw we saw that there was one in Ghana, in Nigeria. Um, who, you know, maybe need to be, um, you know, uh, make sure that they are, they are functioning very well. And we understand that there's one in Morocco. Um, so if for the students wants to organize themselves like that, uh, that's, that's definitely welcome. Uh, well, for us at ESP, we would like to facilitate your participation in this great organization and networking with other students worldwide. Um, so Lawrence, Lawrence, do you, you want to talk about it? Uh, Lawrence um, is one of our colleagues uh, who uh, is really helping us on the African scene. Um, he's um, a committee member of the African Physical Society. He's also uh, one of our fellow to make sure that ESP is functioning very well. So, um, Lawrence, do you want to talk? Uh, I just say that, uh, so I just put the uh, um, link to the African Physical Society's uh, website up. And, um, you know, so, there, so there's a structure that exists or that has existed, or so you could say even attempted. Um, but uh, this is a, within the African context, the idea of, of the African Physical Society, the Pan-African Organization for Physics, um, having a, a student organization that would plug in to IAPS 
is uh, is an old concept. Now we can we can talk about whether or not this structure is adequate for today. Uh, we can talk about that later, uh, offline over the next you know several months to whenever. But um, it is something that's that has been thought about for many years, and, and we can even talk about why it hasn't come to fruition over the many years. Uh, a lot of it had to do with just sort of general economic downturns and just you know just the struggle of trying to sort of exist as a physicist in a on the continent. But um, I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Uh, thanks, Lawrence. Um, I think we should really pick up that discussion again um, um, and, and, and see how we can pick up where that left off and, uh, and, and, then, uh, and, then, and then continue. So um, I would suggest that, uh, you know, we, we, we um, ASP uh, um, International Committee, we, we engage with you and pick up that discussion. Uh, um, and I know that, uh, yes, that you and uh, other people in the African Physical Society have, have worked on that in the past. Um, and, uh, and, and it certainly is still relevant today that uh, African students can organize themselves um, into a functioning organization, which will then be a partner for IEPS. Um, we at ASP can try to facilitate that. So I think let's 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 re-energize re that discussion and see whether we can pick up where you guys left off, and make sure that he he actually come to fruition. Okay, sounds good. So this and maybe as well to suggest because I really liked as well the um, I mean the way for instance as well uh, Rui sorry was uh, showing as well how important it is to be part as well of uh, any executive committee. So, and I guess that you may have some task force as well with the, the APS that uh, would help potentially to support uh, any kind of uh, development of, uh, of the different uh, events that you are doing. So as well, uh, the student that, and I see from St. Harris or, or, or other students as well from uh, the African continent would certainly potentially as well help with that. So it means that, uh, for them, uh, they would be again, so the need to be part of the committee and then they could uh, directly apply. So how long does a term last for instance for, you need to be students huh? or to be below a given age or how, how does it work? If they would like for instance to be involved uh, in some kind of working group to support you. Yeah, so we have no no restriction in terms of, of age or anything like any uh, really any person that is um, connected to to IAPS as a member, uh, either as an individual member or who is part of uh, one of our local or national student groups can participate in a in a working group uh, with um, with really no um, no let's say uh, conditions set from the beginning because one of uh, one of the ideas that we also have uh, of course experience is always welcome but one of the ideas that we also have uh, in terms of the working group uh, is to um, also help um, build um, uh, experience build uh, soft skills build um, hard skills so uh, it's also um, uh, important for us to have this view that uh, we don't just want uh, students with a lot of experience using it for the benefit of IAPS. We also want students that uh, may even have no experience, uh, but want to, to, to learn about what it is uh, like to be involved in an, an international organization uh, and the, what the potential is uh, for, for uh, what this organization can do for the students that are um, uh, that it wants to represent so uh, we we don't set any any initial conditions and anyone who is motivated to work on a certain aspect of uh, of the ifs management is very much welcome uh, i would like to call uh, professor faisal barzi are you uh, uh, uh faisal are you are you there um he was a former 
ASP alumni, or they are already gotten his PhD, or he's a professor now. Um, I would like to see whether he, he wants to say anything. Uh, Fasal, are, are, you, are you there? Do, do you want to say anything? Um, okay. Um, anybody have uh, any questions? Uh, I will suggest Hi. that. Uh, yes, well, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, uh, my name is Sandile uh, from South Africa. And uh, I want to ask Dwight I mean, in South Africa, we, I mean, in my institution, we kind of have a chapter for like an optics uh, group for like OSA and SPID, and mostly whenever we go for like outreach, well, we usually combine the two. So let's just say I had to start something in South Africa or at, in my institution. So will it be, will, it, will there be any conflict of interest if I start by recruiting some of these guys probably to start a chapter with the optics guys, then probably as we, can, as we move on, uh, we can also recruit other people in other fields because right now the most people I know in my university other people that are in optics. Yeah, I think that's all for now. Okay, yeah, so we, we um, nice to meet you, first of all. So we uh, actually have an example of a, um, a chapter of uh, the OSA that is a member of IAPS. Uh, it is a, a local student group in uh, Ecuador. Um, so they joined as a, um, um, it was the chapter of the OSA that joined as a, a local member of IAP. So there's no conflict of interest. We, um, uh, don't, in fact, one of the ideas that we have and that we are uh, we we have talked a bit about with the OSA is precisely uh, to try to find ways for um, local uh, chapters of of the uh, student chapters of the OSA. Uh, to try to recruit them to be uh, uh, a part of IAPS um, because there's al already uh, a lot of structures of OSA student chapters spread across the world uh, and that can really help us uh, to have a, um, uh, a first approach uh, in, um, in the universities where those, those uh, student chapters exist uh, to, to have a first connection and to start developing uh, the the, um, the the organizing of students in physics areas at the local level, um, starting from those chapters. So, if you uh, you have students from a, um, an OSA local chapter um, that also uh, want to think about being involved in IAPS, that's very much welcome. Um, okay, I think we've been talking for almost two hours. I would suggest uh, that in the next three minutes. Um, we can stop and, and we will be engaging the IS, uh, IAPS committee. I mean, ASP, IOC will be engaging the IAPS committee to formalize uh, our relationship. And uh, the African students who are connected, uh, like we said, like Sandile wants to do, you may have uh, your local chapter and join independently. Um, but at ASP, we would like to facilitate that process for you guys. Uh, as well, anything that we can do, uh, uh, we'll try to do that. Um, I would like to propose anybody wants to have uh, any last comments. I mean, certainly for this meeting, but we'll keep talking. Uh, and um, especially for the African students, um, the, the Planck's competition. If uh, any one of you is interested um, for, for, for that, uh, let uh, us know in the IOC, and if we can find four, four of you to to get involved, I uh, I would like to see uh, some of you get involved very quickly <clears throat> in that competition. So, if you are interested, uh, let us know so that uh, we can find you know three or four of you to team up and um, and 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 go to the registration process. I think that's very important. Yeah. Um, uh, anybody has any any other questions or any other comments? Um, I would also suggest that uh, people who have uh, who can 
um, show their faces. To do that, I would like to take a screenshot. Um, so I think there are a number of people. Let me see. Okay, now we fit on only one screen because some people have left, unfortunately. So uh, turn on your, yeah, I would like to take uh, uh, just one a screenshot and now, uh, and now, uh, and now. Uh, um, um, so there's one thing we, we, um, I recorded this session. I will upload the recording back to the agenda page. Uh, Duarte and our friends from IEPS, if uh, you, um, um, if it is okay with you, uh, you can send us uh, the PDF of your talk, uh, which uh, we will also upload, upload to our agenda page. Um, and also the screenshot that I'm about to make as well uh, will be on the agenda page, um, just for people to know that uh, uh, the, so this information will become public. And if it's a problem for anybody, the chat as well, I'm going to save the chat. Uh, let me do that now so I don't I don't forget. I'm going to save the chats um, so that uh, um, you know a, a, we have all of, we have the record. Um, let me see uh, uh, this uh, screenshot. I don't do this very often. Um, so if uh, all right, so I think I got it. Um, wait, there's still two more situation in the chat. Uh, okay, so yeah, I you have uh, you've heard all of our friends from IAPS right now. They, you know, they they are students just like you. So feel free to uh, and they are very friendly and good people. We've been talking to them before this meeting. So um, African students, uh, feel free to engage with them. Uh, this session is really for you. So. Uh, we would like you to be really involved with uh, your colleagues uh, internationally. Um, all right, so on that note, I will suggest that we stop right now and uh, um, Duarte and, and, and the others, uh, Elora and, and, and the other people, we will uh, touch base with you and, and, and uh, continue the discussion. And uh, I really uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, to, to come for to, to explain to us all the wonderful things that you are doing I apps. I really, really wish uh, a good continuation of this organization is really uh, fundamental It's extremely important to have this and and I hope that uh, we will get African students mobilized uh, to have uh, a good participation and, and visibility in, in I apps. Thank you, Katevi. Uh, really a, a big thank you to you uh, and to, to everyone that has attended. Um, it's really important to, to, for, for us to have these uh, moments of more uh, of closer contact with, with students to hopefully um, get more, more people engaged in IAP. So I really wanted to thank you, uh, not only for, for this session, but also for all of the availability uh, that uh, you, Christine, and, and Steve have been having uh, in terms of um, of collaborating with us, um, so I think this this is a um, a special collaboration, and hopefully we can uh, really continue to develop as we um, continue to to work together. It's only right. the beginning. <laughs> yes, uh, Steve, you want to add anything? Or? Uh, no, uh, I would just like to to thank everyone that has joined and uh, especially uh, uh, the people from IEPS for their very nice uh, talk uh, with uh, really impressive uh, activities that you're, uh, you're doing. And it's very nice to, to see that. I hope that uh, yeah, African students will manage to, uh, to join some of your activities. Christine? Thank you. Yeah, indeed. So this is exactly the same thing to create and to, to really strengthen the synergy that exists. And as we've seen, so Africa could definitively be, I mean, providing as well certainly some added value for developing and developed country altogether. So, so this spirit is really something that uh, can be carried thanks to vector like education. So students, so you are really the I mean, yeah, what tomorrow will be as well. So it's very important yeah, to, to pass the message and the visibility of your team 
definitely with new ideas that uh, help as well us to to think in terms of out of the box how as well we could potentially uh, get some more more synergies as well and then from the american side certainly so as you said so the upa but maybe the american physical society so we'll try to engage a little bit more um, because i'm part as well of this committee yeah all right. Um, okay. Um, thanks, everybody. So we stop the session right now, and uh, we we'll continue the discussion uh, offline and through other means. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.